Hey, welcome to the shop, David Bryan Woodworks. You know, I've watched so many shop videos about showing people, you know, their shops. So I thought, geez, I love watching those. Maybe it'd be nice if I made one myself. This shop, I've 10 years, this specific um, shop, this it's a garage and the garage I've been, we've lived at this home for about nine, 10 years or so. And it's been working out great. Um, I've had actual thoughts. However, in, when I'm doing some kitchen jobs where it just takes up a little bit of more space, I've actually considered, um, rather than trying to find a bigger shop space, busting out this wall, uh, there's a bedroom and bathroom back there. But um, that's just one of those things that um, I don't think is going to happen. And there's a couple reasons for it. One is we are actually lower in this particular area. As you come into the garage from the house, you actually drop down uh, steps and you can see the actual cement um, right there. You see how we're, we're down about 15 inches or so. Now, what that does is it allows this garage to have a 10 foot six high ceiling. So we've got a really high ceiling and we only have these two um, headers going across there. And they're what's perfect for it because my um, Polk workbench fits right in there and it hangs. Uh, when I wanna get it down, all I do is take that little piece of wood, turn it and it drops it down because it's hanging on the other side. Um, so that works out great for that space there, as well as some high storage for items that I don't necessarily need too much of too often. So the extra height works great for um, lots of things, especially when you're talking about bringing in pieces of wood that are 10 feet, 12 feet, you know, 16 feet long. So I keep my, um, I actually I'm, I'm, low. I need to take a trip to the lumber yard actually to replenish. I usually use my um, maple and poplar uh, for stain grade and paint grade jobs and they pretty much always go there. So I can put um, 14 foot long boards there. Uh, actually I can put 16 foot longs as well. I'm sorry. Um, but they have to go behind the um, the ductwork for the uh, vacuum. So if I put 16 foot long boards, they go in the back and then they slide by the uh, duct. Uh, but normally I don't get 16 footers. It's just rare. Let me start off with, um, I guess, uh, right from where I'm at. It makes a lot of sense. This is the corner of the shop that I find probably the most beneficial for this particular garage space because I've got a large two car um, garage here plus that massive tandem part so that space is imperative uh, for my um, everyday you know cabinet making business I need to have um, this space because if I don't have this space there's no way I could operate uh, with what we do um, but the the width of this space here beside the garage door, you see how there's quite a bit of space that allowed me to put this big Oneida dust collector in there and it worked perfectly for a couple reasons. One is um, the header that's right there for the um, garage door actually extends past. And so I had I had a massive amount of support on the house to hang that guy because that's literally hanging off of those um, bolts that are in the wall. So it's not just two by fours, it's holding that up. And then um, I wanted to give it a little extra support. So I came down from the ceiling. Um, but this, this works phenomenally. So I was able to buy this um, pre-owned on uh, Craigslist. I found it, um, somebody about three hours away and it was a big shop. I mean, I got in there and the shop was massive. It must be like 4,000 square feet or something. Humongous space. And they had several of these. Um, and they were selling this one and one other one. So I bought this one and um, I came with a bunch of ductwork as well. Um, so then I also saw another ad on Craigslist, unrelated, 
where they were actually selling a molder, a Williams and Hussey molder, and a whole bunch of ductwork. And the ductwork was the spiral ductwork, right? So I actually went down, and that's, that was also the same area. I went down and I grabbed this uh, molder, and it was covered with rust. And I mean, it was, you know, this is a beach community, San Diego, California, and it had rust on it. But the piping was all outside and it was in the mud, in the dirt and mud. So I got all this stuff. It was nighttime and it was actually raining. Um, I covered it up with the tarp. I brought it back to the shop. You know, it was windy and it was raining. It was cold. And um, I waited for the rain to stop the next day, took it out from underneath the tarp, um, cleaned everything up. And then ultimately I sold the Williams and Hussey molder and I sold all the ductwork that I didn't need. Um, and the guy that bought the ductwork was, uh, he was so happy that he got it. Um, I basically gave it a, almost away for free because I felt so um, lucky to have gotten it for what I got it for. I mean, all the ductwork that I got, I paid a hundred bucks for, and it was a massive amount. I mean, it was over a thousand dollars easily in ductwork. So I, I, I basically gave the guy, um, I think I, I sold it for 50 bucks or something. And, you know, I didn't use a ton of it, but I took whatever I could fit in my truck, which was a fair amount. So, um, the guy was so stoked. He, um, he left and, uh, same type of thing, you know, he's going to go back and duct his uh, shop. So I was real happy to be able to sell it to a woodworker that needed it, not some scrap metal guy. Um, but, uh, anyways, this dust collector is great. You saw a video that I did, um, recently, I'll put a link on it actually of changing this, uh, from the non HEPA to the HEPA. And, um, I'm glad I did. Although this is a little pricey to do this, um, it's worth it because your shop, your lungs, you know, everything, it performs even better than it did with the non HEPA filter. And, um, I just, am, I'm real happy with that. So check out the video if you, if you're interested in doing that. Um, they have them for all different sizes, not just this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, these are phenomenal machines. You know, everything's got its own dedicated outlet. I don't have to undo anything. And all that was done before I got in the show, got in this garage. I had my electrician come and, um, we laid it out and this is my sub panel here. And we, um, basically just laid it out and got everything I wanted around it. Um, but I mean, I got pretty lucky with everything and then I just put it on the ceiling since I have these high ceilings, um, I just use strapping and then it comes down. So it, it works really well for, um, this, I don't have the, the four inch hose going everywhere. That's what I had before I had that dust collector. I had the, um, the standard one with the filter on the top that got clogged every five seconds. It works great. But this pipe comes down here and then it splits to a, a Y right here. And then this is a, a five inch and then it goes to a four inch and that four inch goes right to my overarm guard, overhead guard, whatever you want to call it. And then I've got my six inch running all the way down to my uh, table saw. Now this is a general uh, 350 millennium and this, or um, mill millennial, I can't remember what it's called. Millennium 350. Um, it's made in Canada. This is a really nice saw. And um, so I bought this new. Um, I, I wish I could have found this on the used market. But, you know, when you want to buy a specific saw, you just can't find them uh, pre-owned. And uh, it just doesn't ever happen. So this, um, luckily, I've got a supplier down uh, in L.A., which is 30 minutes from me. And um, they have a showroom and they had these and they work great because uh, they uh, they also had Powermatic. So I was comparing the two and, um, you know, ultimately I chose this one. Um, Powermatics are good as well, Th but it's nice to just be able to have these nice saws. Um, but one thing is the saws, as great as they are, they don't have very good dust collection set setups. So this one in particular, you know, like a lot, has a four inch hole. Well, I took that four inch hole and I actually cut it with my um, jigsaw. I jigsawed it out and made it uh, fit my um, six inch blast gate. And so now I have six inch pipe going in there. 
and um, that pulls really well. Does a, does a great job. Um, and you can see, of course, you've got my my um, workbench that's um, back there, and it's got basically a mess of stuff. Um, and it's just absolutely great for deep storage. Um, but one of these days, I think I'm going to change it out and try to do something a little different with it. Maybe. But okay, so on this side of the um, shop, I've got uh, this is where I put my four by eight storage that I'm working with right now. So these sheets are um, they're basically going to be processed. And I have a really good system that I feel works great for me. I take these pieces and I basically put them like that. And then I slide them over and then I drop them down and then I put them right through the machine. So setting them here to me is the ultimate way to do this. It doesn't take a lot of strength to do this. Um, everybody that I've ever had working for me at some point in time, they thought, geez, how am I going to be able to do that? But then they realized, man, that was, you know, it's pretty cool to do it this way. The other four by eight storage is over there. And that is harder to get to because you got to pull it out over here and then you have to actually lift it up. So it's a little bit more complicated, but you can still do it the same way. You just have to move it further. Um, but anyways, it's uh, leaning up against the wall and the wall has... Um, has some uh, pipes in it on it uh, it's got an outlet so the first thing I wanted to do when I uh, made this storage area is I put on a, um, a basically a furring strip to put the wood out so it's not touching the pipes and or the outlet and then what I did is I actually made this straight um, I took a straight edge and I put shims behind this piece and um, basically made it straight so that when you put these pieces up against the piece, uh, the sheets don't bend and they're constantly being um, held straight. Lots of things hanging, my um, sliding um, crosscut sleds. Uh, this is the one I use every day for every job. And then that one's for another, you know, I typically just use that one for uh, frameless jobs. Okay, so um, what else? I've got my blade storage here and this is for, uh, it's great for 10 inch boards. I mean, 10 inch saw blades. However, if you have 12 inch, uh, it's not great. So I have a hook here, a screw here, and I just sent um, some more blades out for sharpening. So um, when I get dull ones, I'll put them here as well, um, or I'll just store my 12 inch ones. If I'm um, waiting for them to go out to sharpening, I just always put the ones that are dull there so that I know which ones need to go out. And then I've got, um, you know, ones in here, these are all sharp, ready to go. Um, and I've got my accessories. These I don't use too often, the stabilizers, but they're there for thin curve blades if you wanna use them. Um, they also help with the sound if you've got some blades that are a little bit vibration-y and they make noise when you use them. Uh, they'll start whining. If you put a um, dampener on and it really does help with that. Uh, so if you've noticed you have like almost a ringing sound when you put your saw on, Try one of those dampeners. You might notice this, the ringing might go away. Um, and, you know, edge banding tape here. These guys here, uh, feather boards for the table saw. They're magnetic. And uh, of course this I've got my, uh, this is what I wanna use my um, rib fence to do rabbits, but I don't wanna cut into the uh, rib fence. So this is my sacrificial um, board that goes on the table saw rib fence. Uh, and I've got, you know, various other you know, items, nothing big, uh, zero clearance throw plates, um, all, all sorts of stuff, cones for uh, when I have my trailer, um, you know, safety. Um, I've got my 13 hole line boring machine and these are really cool. I didn't have this um, for, uh, I got this about 10, nine years ago. Actually, right when we moved to this shop, actually, I got it. Um, it's great. It is one of those things that you don't use all the time, but when you use it, you love it. Um, but you know, for libraries, kitchens, anything with a lot of, um, shelves, you want adjustable shelves. These are great. And this is a Delta and you know how I got this tool Craigslist. And this of course is my general, um, table saw. You see this all the time with my favorite thing that you could get for a table saw. And that is the overhead arm there. 
and it really does work great. Um, I wish that you could get these still. Uh, however, um, actually you can now, um, saw stop since they bought, um, or they merged with, uh, Excalibur. Um, this is an Excalibur. And so now you can get those from saw stop. They offer these. And I actually have a link in my um, description uh, for my um, Excalibur. They call it Saw Stop now, but it's exactly the same, except it's black. Go figure. Um, but but yeah, so this is a, um, you know, I just put the uh, this digital readout. I just put this on, so I just made a video of that as well. Um, this is cool. I'm so excited about this. I can't wait. Uh, this project that I'm going to be working on is going to be um, the first project that I will have this uh, Wixi digital readout for. So I'm totally, I'm super excited about that. Now, I love 24-inch um, clamps, and I can't have enough of them. I have 24 of them, and I keep 12 on each end of the workbench. And this is the perfect spot for, in my opinion, uh, clamps that otherwise would be um, used for what? There's not a whole lot you could do with this space. For clamp storage, to me, it's the best spot. So I, I have this, uh, I used to make my own clamp racks, but then I, I got these uh, from uh, Rockler, I think, or no, Woodcraft, I don't remember, from Amazon. And they came in the mail. Actually, not, not neither of those places. This is a, uh, I'll have a link. I can't remember who makes these, but they're, they take up less space and they're stronger. And I can put, um, they fit because they, they're perfect height for this setup. Um, those things are really nice. I love them. And uh, of course, if you know what's in here, this is a vacuum. And I'm always amazed at how uh, nasty it looks when you open up this door. This vacuum was brand new when I put this in here. Um, maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And it hasn't come out since. And it's always on when I'm vacuuming uh, for sanding or routing or anything. This thing goes and it's just nasty. So that's like soot in there. And it's in a, you saw my video on this. This is one of my newest additions to the shop. And it's probably one of my most favorite additions that I've re recently put in. This is the IVAC switch box. And I'm telling you, if you don't have one of these and you have a vacuum that's automated, um, I think you should get one of these. This allows me to flip the vacuum on by this switch right here just by itself. I don't have to have a tool hooked up to it. And it's, it's just awesome. I didn't have this before and I don't know why. I just had the automatic setup and it always drives me crazy because I wanted to vacuum something. So I'd put my vacuum hose here, but I had to put a tool on in order to get the power to the vacuum. So this allows me to put the tool, you know, the vacuum hose and then clean up the floor or whatever without having a tool go on, um, you know, for, for lots of reasons, that's awesome. So there's another router in there. Um, during my um, installation of this, I inadvertently flipped on the router and it cut the cord. Um, and it's a Milwaukee 5625, phenomenal router. And I, I screwed up. Um, and I think I fried the circuit board or something because it's not working. I gotta fix that. That's, an, that's one of my favorite routers. Um, but it works great. And this thing, you know, just swings out uh, to door to access the um, router. Um, this is some more deep storage, dado blades, uh, a great set of DeWalt self feeding bits. And this is the old classic uh, Bosch jigsaw. I love this. You saw the video on that. Um, you know, sanding stuff setup blocks there and this is my dust deputy so this is actually a dust deputy that's made from um oneida Th these are great uh, however i did crack this lid um, just because of the pressure i think it got clogged something happened and the pressure uh it, it just it cracked it so i gotta maybe get a new top for that guy but those are great and i lock a lot of these doors because I don't know when the next big earthquake is going to happen. Maybe it's going to happen today. Um, but it's just one of those things uh, I've, I've been trained to do, um, to have locks on stuff so that the doors don't fly open and stuff go flying out. All right. So there's some more clamps, um, uh, the backside here. I've got the, um, 
that's for my paw uh, workbench. Uh, those are the sawhorses for it. Um, generally, I leave those in my trailer, but since I have this in here now, I used to keep, keep this in the trailer because I didn't have a space for it. And then one day I, th I looked up and I thought, geez, why don't I put my paw workbench right there? And it's great. It's completely out of the way. Duh. I don't know what, what I was thinking, but those work great there. And then, of course, this is my, you know, just nasty storage area. This is not very um, tidy, and I just realized that my uh, hollow core door has collapsed. So it's basically given out completely now. Um, it's nasty. But this rigid uh, sander, it does get a lot of good reviews, and it really is a nice tool to have. I use it primarily for coping uh, base or or um, crown or um, shoe molding. The base and shoe molding is probably the most popular pe uh, to uh, cope on this guy. And I just put the, the uh, sanding drum on it and I cope my, uh, I did a video, I'll have a link on that too. Trust me, if you wanna cope shoe molding, uh, or base or whatever, this is a great tool for that. I've got my uh, TS-75 Fest tool. I don't use this a lot, but when I need it, it's great to have. Um, and this is my hose reel for the, the um, air tools. So this is connected to that uh, air compressor back there. It's behind everything, and it's great because it's out of the way. And when I got that uh, drill line boring jig, I made this uh, platform for it to go on. And that gave me a bunch of storage because essentially I have now this area down there that um, I could store a bunch of stuff that I don't use regularly. So I actually took a, um, some wood and I put it across and made a bunch of shelves in there. So it just got deep storage. But right now you can see I've got a, a dust deputy, um, fake dust deputy that doesn't work uh, back there. That's gonna need to be changed because it doesn't work. Uh, at all. This is another Craigslist uh, find. This is an, a, a Festool um, a Clean Tech a CT33. I got this on Craigslist and the guy was a painter. And as you can see, uh, he didn't care about his tools. So he would leave them out and overspray from the paint would get on them um, and it discolored. I got this for $100. I'm not kidding you. 100 bucks and it came with a hose um you know it's like okay because i'm like this thing looks like hell and he's like yeah and i'm like i don't even know if the thing works and he's like oh it does and i say well i can't tell because i can't i have no way to to put it on we met in the parking lot and i said this thing looks like it's like it's gonna you know not last very long so I offered him a hundred bucks and he said, okay, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> so got this for a hundred dollars. Um, and that was, uh, maybe eight years, seven years ago, let's call it. So I'm loving that thing it just sits there. All it does is it sit there, sits there by the, um, drill press and it pulls the, um, chips for when I do doors and hinges. So that's the purpose there. And this is my, um, one of my newest tool acquisitions, uh, the Laguna 16 inch. I got this on Craigslist. You saw that I put a base on it. Um, and you know, these things are great. I don't do the rails. I just put the base on the actual tool itself. And, um, I love this thing. I put a wood slicer um, blade on it. So you've seen the videos and you know what this thing looked like when I got it. This is, uh, a, I love this. In fact, I got this on Craigslist also. Isn't that weird? This was actually from a business though. Um, and they were going out of business and this was brand new. Uh, it was a dealer. They were going out of business. So they had a bunch of stuff and I was able to get the Powermatic drill press. Uh, and it was brand new and this was a, quite a while ago, but um, I was able to get that uh, for um, 700 bucks. And I felt like, I'm like, wow, brand new Powermatic drill press for 700 bucks, this one. Uh, I was pretty stoked since they were going for, you know, a thousand when, it, when I bought it, I made a table for it. Um, if anybody wants to make a table for their drill press, I think this is probably one of the simplest, straightforward, best 
drill press tables that I've ever used um, because it's got phenomenal dust collection. The stops are great. It's adjustable, right? You can do pretty much anything with it. It's got onboard storage for the um, drill bits and whatnot. Uh, it's pretty much got everything you could imagine. If you want to, you can take this out and make new ones. Uh, I have a few of them, but I very rarely do that, but you certainly can. Um, this is set up essentially to um, reverse. So if I reversed it, I would get a fresh um, piece here because it's oblong. And um, so all you have to do is take this out, put it to the back, and then you'll have a fresh piece. So every insert you put in there, you have two, um, they're basically two usable areas, provided you're not using huge holes, um, cutters or something. Using this to make um, mortises for the uh, cups for the uh, European hinges. So it's just rare that I'm ever doing anything other than that. So I don't normally go through. Um, but this is a great, uh, great setup. This actually is a one inch thick piece that was left over from a router table that I made. The very first router table I ever made. And it was the Norm Abrams router table. I was so excited about it. And when it was all said and done, I ended up having some scraps left over. So I used this as a, uh, my um, router table uh, or my drill press table. It worked great. And then I had a hunk of cherry left over. So I made that and just it's just real simple there's not a lot to it it does bolt to the bottom um, and it's just great everything works great on it um, so what else you can see i've got lots of storage there ladders whatnot some speakers and um you know i've got levels there the levels you know those are always tough to find good places to put them um this is a Great way to do it, you know, because uh, what do you, I mean, they're hard to store, especially the eight foot ones, but this is a, a really a nice way to do it, especially in my shop. I'm pretty blessed to have it go right by the, um, the header there, the beam, and ew, it's like perfect. It's right in line with the door and it goes right by the, the beam. So I think it was made for that space. I'm pretty sure the builder said, make it for that empire eight foot level and you, it'll be great and then i've got some other ones this actually i used to um calibrate the laguna the wheels on it uh, i have a video of that as well i took my six foot uh eight straight edge which is the level and then i connected those two uh, pieces of mdf that way i could straddle the um the frame of the saw right you put one of the pieces of mdf here and then that opening comes down here and straddles the frame so you can make sure those wheels are coplanar. And these were not, by the way. I had to adjust them pretty good. But anyways, uh, something I can't live without, and that's the, the air conditioner. Um, it's a definite, you got to have it where, where we are. It is super, well, it's going to be 106 again. For basically this whole week, we're having about 106 degrees. And it's October 1st today. No, October 2nd. Water heater. I wish that wasn't there, but you know what? It's it's a house. It's a, it's a garage, so you got to have some of this stuff. Um, but it's nice to have that space. I can hang stuff. I have templates here. Um, various arch and holes and, you know, a T-square. You know, various things. Um, shop floor, clean, uh, vacuum attachment. This is my Festool rail. So this is the one that comes with the TS-75. It's like the 70 inch one. Uh, and then I've got the, um, for the Paul workbench, I use that jig that I made. So basically I can just put that on any, any workbench and create the same pattern um, that's on that Paul workbench. And that's a really cool workbench, by the way. Uh, but I don't, I'm not like one of these um, uh, people that want to have a bunch of holes in my workbench. Uh, because as you're using it, you're inevitably stuff's going to fall down there. And I just don't like that. So I have these tracks when, um, when I made this, uh, this was about when these first came out. And I want to say this was 15 years ago. This came out, uh, these tracks from, uh, Craig and they came out and 
it was a face frame or door making uh, jig that you could buy, right? It was a little table and it had two of these tracks um, and it formed a right angle. So you could put your doors or your face frame and it was a little thing. And I thought to myself, I don't know who's going to make such a small face frame with those. Um, maybe it would be good for like vanities or something, but I mean, they're really small. So I didn't really understand the purpose of having such a small table, but I called Craig up and said, do you guys have these available to buy individually without the table and all that stuff? And they said, yes, you could buy them in packs or the 36 inch long or whatever, um, 32 inch long. And uh, I said, okay. So I found out they did. I bought them and they're great. You got to put these things in pretty well because um, they're going to pull out if you don't. So as you can see here, you see all the bolts. Um, there's basically glue and bolts. And these bolts are every five inches. Oh my gosh. Tell me that's not crazy. So when you do this, it is a... Uh, process to do that whole thing but when you, when it's all said and done you can't pull up so when you clamp down there is nothing budging those clamps um, th this piece if you just use normal wood screws you would just pull out all the time um, but this doesn't just can't pull out so I've got this around the entire perimeter of this uh, top and this top is a um, two-piece uh, MDF and it's the full thickness it's the regular mdf it's not the ultralight and it, there's a joint right here so i did this my originally back in um 2000 and i don't know whenever i did whenever i bought these so let's say 15 years ago and i put shellac on it and then i um, a couple coats of shellac and then waxed it and that's it i haven't touched it since and it's held up decently, but in the wear areas, it hasn't, right? So I've gotten a lot of, um, uh, you know, wear on this area and the finish has completely come off. I mean, it's been a long time. So if you look at this is where it was before, real smooth and slick, but anything where you have a lot of wear, it just wears out. In fact, you can even see here where the, um, this is the um, crosscut sled. This is the end of it and it drags right there. But uh, this is a great, um, this whole thing is is really perfect for, uh, and it's an assembly table and it's an outfeed table. It's a router table if I need. And if I'm doing really big items to route, uh, like boxy or something, I can put my router here and I can put the fence if I need to. But normally this is just freehand routing and I have an attachment to come up and collect the dust from it, some of the dust. And um, this is for, uh, you know, miter sled if you want to, and a hold down area here as well. So this section here is kind of like my, the central, um, you know, every single job, it's all here, right? You could pretty much eliminate this whole section and you would be able to do every job here, right? Cross cut sled, you could cut everything to length. Um, router table, everything would be done here. Building and assembling, everything would be done. Clamping, everything. So if you were just a small shop and you only had room for one thing, you could make this one thing and it would suffice for almost every item in your shop if you do it smartly and there's really nothing that would hold you back from doing an entire uh, all-inclusive shop like this just in this one section. Now, it may not be able to be quite as big, depending on your space, but um, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely nice to have this. And let me take a measurement because I don't remember what it is. I think this is seven feet. Um, so I'm going to go all the way to the end there. All right. So it is 81 inches, roughly. And let's see here. Okay. So that other way was just under eight or seven feet. And this is nine and a half feet. So 
nine and a half feet by uh, roughly seven feet, the goal for me. Um, and I've got my overhead dust collector um, air cleaner right there. And that does a pretty good job. So my lighting is decent, but I do notice that sometimes this area here, uh, it is a little bit, it could be a little bit um, brighter. So I think I'm gonna grab a couple more uh, four foot uh, lights and put a couple more up just to give myself a little bit more light energy efficient as well. Okay, so we're coming around. We're back to this section here, but uh, we didn't talk about the jointer. So this is my DJ20 um, Delta jointer, although they don't call it the DJ20 anymore. Uh, when I bought this, it was still called the DJ20 and it's listed as the DJ20, but um, they rebadged it. I don't really care. It's the par parallelogram joiner. And then I, um, a few, few years after I got it, I changed to the, the Beard Shelix head on this thing and uh, haven't looked back since. That, that's a much better head than the, the regular straight knife. So this is actually 110. It can go 110 or 220. I have it set to 110. And it's cool because I don't, it doesn't take up another 220. And um, frankly, it doesn't do anything to the performance of it. So if a tool gives you the option and you don't necessarily want to utilize more um, 220 outlets, then, you know, by all means, go 110. The 220 version of this, um, it doesn't provide any more oomph to it. So originally I had it set for 220 and then I switched it to 110 to see the difference and there wasn't any. So definitely that saved the 220 outlet and um, it's just, you know, it's, it's perfect. Um, the dust collection on it's not great. It's got a four inch hose there. Actually that, I would like that to be different. I would like that to be six inch straight up. And I think the six inch would probably collect more, but it's just that kind of the nature of the beast where you've got the, the open space up here and the, the um, chips kind of fly out the backside. So it's a little bit of a mess, but you know, it is what it is. More clamp storage for the longer clamps. And again, that's an, that's more of that track that I got, uh, clamp racks. And I've got several hoses. Um, and I've got my duct work, my metal duct work going down and it goes all the way into the workbench, all the way to the um, very far end of the workbench. Here I've got this little section I actually made um, not too long ago, actually, a couple years ago, because I got the Craig Foreman and um, actually it was like five years ago. I got that guy and I love it. It's great. Um, it actually gives me another right foot and a half of outfeed support. Um, so it extends my workbench, but it also takes away a little bit of my usable joining length. Um, so if I need to joint longer boards, I can pivot that guy out. But as long as I can join an eight foot board, I'm pretty good. Eight feet's usually the longest that I need to join. Um, and, but this little section here kind of was a afterthought. Once I did that, I'm like, you know what? It's going to work great. If I do this, I can get all that. And that gives me a little bit of space to put stuff, you know, and those tool uh, organizers for my job, uh, on-site installations, that it works great for that. Um, and of course I've got the vacuums. That vacuum I just used for jobs and it was upstairs because I was doing a, the wood floor and I've got two um, sustainers that go in that. They're the work top sustainers and I use those um, uh, primarily for installations and um, that they're upstairs as well. But normally, so those sustainers fit here, one here and then one here and it literally goes right to the top. So it rubs the, the rubber on the top of that sustainer as you push it in. So couldn't be any lower. And it was a perfect height, excellent space to store all this stuff. And a drawer slide support um, installation jigs um, and uh, various other things, sandpaper, my squares for assembling cabinets. Uh, I've got my stereo for my got to have tunes. Right. However, when you video, it's a lot harder because I used to have music on all the time. But when you video, you can't have music, right? Because of copyright. So I don't use it as much anymore because I'm videoing pretty much every single job. And 
it's just uh, one of those things. I guess you can mute out the video or the music, but it's kind of hard if you're talking and there's music in the background. But uh, this guy here uh, is for sandpaper, various stuff. I've got my glues and um, some screw storage, you know, all sorts of stuff. And these cabinets actually came from my previous uh, shop, which was another garage, almost exactly like this. So I was able to take uh, this and essentially build up the exact same um, deal, except I took these drawers, I took from the house that I sold, I left the cabinet, the base cabinet, because I couldn't lift it, it was too long. So I left it, but I took the drawers. So whoever got the house, right? Whoever bought it, we told them we were taking it. Um, so whoever bought it did not buy the drawers with it. And, uh, and they didn't, and they got the countertop as well. So I left that. Um, so all they would have to do is put some, you know, doors on it or something, and you'll have a whole bunch of workbench storage. So I'm sure they were real happy, but I made um, the cabinet to house these drawers. That's why the alignment is not so great um, on these drawers. I'm, it, this is not something that I would show a customer. Yeah, this is what your kitchen will look like if you use me because I'm, you know, I can see so well. Nothing is lining up with these. I mean, uh, you know, if you look at this stuff, look at yeah. this. But the way that my, um, the way that everything worked, uh, it was kind of a mess to, to do, but it worked out. I could utilize these drawers and it, it kind of was perfect. It was meant to be, let's say. Um, and then, because building all those drawers would have taken a long time. Uh, and when we moved, I was in the middle of a whole bunch of jobs. And so I was really having a tough time getting in this shop and then actually starting to build stuff. So the first few jobs I did, I didn't even have, this wasn't even set up. The um, drawers were sitting in the corner stacked up. Um, I was working on, um, you know, saw horses and all that stuff. It was, it was a nightmare. And it was actually a huge custom island that I was building with a, with a, a walnut, solid walnut top. And it was, you know, a nine foot by, you know, five foot island or something. And that was a big job to do without a dedicated um, shop. Uh, but I got through it. And then once that was done, boom, I did this. So um, this is a, this is a great system. And I consider this to be, um, you know, probably, uh, I, I feel like it's, it's almost as, as good as it can be for a workbench. I don't need storage down below. I use that for other stuff. Um, I know I, I've seen so many videos where people show their awesome shops and, try, and there are some phenomenal shops. There are shops out there that make you wonder if they ever do any work in them because there's not a speck of dust. There's not a, a wood chip anywhere. Um, there's nothing out of place. It just doesn't look used. Uh, I don't get it. I don't understand how you could possibly do anything without having something look like there's dust on the floor. I mean, it just amazes me that there are so many shops out there that just look that way. But um, I've seen lots of awesome shops that have cabinets that go down and they've got this huge contraption that goes around the saw to collect the dust. Well, I don't have that um, because I feel like I want the space here underneath for various items. And even when I'm putting cabinets on here, I want that extra depth for let's say I'm doing work um, with uh, doors. If I'm building doors, I actually utilize this space to hang, or I mean to um, store the doors uh, when I'm gluing them up. So I'm constantly using um, the full depth of the countertops. Not to mention um, all the um, cabinets. If I have cabinets that I need to overflow onto the workbench while they're gluing up, I can push them all the way back and you know I've got lots of room for that. So I really don't want to have that hutch style um, system. And I also don't want to have a raised up fence system with um, stops on it for the uh, miter um, saw. I just don't think that that's useful in the, from the standpoint of if you, have, if you have something that's fixed right here, right? And it goes down the whole length of the, of the um, table then don't you lose the ability to like 
put stuff on this, it kind of makes your miter station not so useful uh, because it's taking up a lot of that room. I don't think it's a, gr a great design, but I think some people do find it useful. I prefer um, the sunk down approach and I prefer um, stops that flip up out of the way. So these are the same ones I have on my drill press and my um, crosscut sled. Um, they're pretty good. They're not like phenomenal, but as far as um, stops go, they're, they're nice and they flip up out of the way. So I've got this, you know, flat surface. I have this ability and I have these flip stops. Um, and then I have my homemade ones that this is a really good one, but it doesn't flip up out of the way, but it does slide out of the way. Um, so this one, if I need to move it, it slides behind the fence and then I can use it for a stop. But this is rock solid, so if I need anything that's like really heavy duty, that's what I use because it's not going to budge at all. Um, but this works phenomenally. The dust collection is really good. It's not perfect, but it's really good. And I, that's because I have a six inch um, port back there. And this piece um, literally just lifts up this whole um, setup here. And I, I've got that basically a cover that covers up my six inch port back there so just made that it's an easy blast gate and um, cover that when i don't need it and then i have this vacuum guy right there that goes to my um beam uh, vacuum that's right there so that's my central vac Pump pulls in and it's got a lot of cfm that thing rocks uh, and it just goes that's what it's for but if i need to you know clean up an area maybe I'm doing some stuff and there's um, wood chips or something I just pull it off the um, the miter saw and I can vacuum uh, you know clean up the area or something um, oftentimes I am chiseling and all that stuff but um, so yeah this is a great um, workbench and I understand not everybody's gonna have the space that this um, takes up but uh, I can do um, 17 foot long uh, boards so 17 foot long to the miter gauge or to the miter saw to cut. Um, so if I'm doing casing or um, it's actually it's over 17 feet because casing comes 17 foot long and I can do uh, I can put those no problem. Even with the, um, the band saw there, it just goes right by it. And it's just awesome. The router table, this is the one I use every day. Um, this is my favorite setup and I, I love it it's all in integrated right it's perfect so if you're doing this kind of work all the time and you need to have a big space to do a routing this is definitely the way to go the dust collection is really good i've got a six inch um, port here of course it's closed but um that guy right there pulls some serious air and you i mean you're getting a lot of um collection right there i've got my uh the um, 5625 milwaukee that's a phenomenal router of course you you know you, you got to have router bit storage so um various router bits and i've got these are kind of like my um door stuff making uh and this is my quarter inch section which is kind of a little bit here uh, but again this is my first um, set of router bits that I ever got, and I was so stoked. And if you look at the name, it's Carb Tech. I picked these up from uh, an old woodworking magazine in uh, 1998, and I was so excited to get them. And I still have them. Uh, and they're decent. They, they, they're okay. They're, you know, you're not going to get really great results from a lot of stuff from them, but you know what? They were really cheap. Oh, this is my um, drawer for all my router, um, you know, accessories. Lots of stuff. Wrenches. Sometimes I just write which ones they go to. Like that says Bosch and Porter Cable Trim. Um, it's just, uh, you know, you have so many of them and sometimes you lose track of, of what's what. The um, storage in here. This was a, a mess a little while back and I changed it. I actually did a video on it. I'm, I'm so excited that I did that because it just really makes things so much easier 
to deal with when you have a spot for everything. Uh, this is really cool. I love it. It's not like really organized like a, you know, those foam inserts, but it's, uh, it's very, very organized for me and I enjoy it. Down here, again, uh, when I did that drawer, I did pretty much all these just so I can have um, ultimate organization. This one drawer used to be filled with um, molding profile pieces. I used to have tons of these um, sample pieces so that when I would use the um, shaper or the router table, I would know what profile I wanted, or if I'm designing a job, I can use this um, and just say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and make this. And that's the size that it's going to be. Um, this was actually from a, a bed that I made. And it's just uh, one of those things created that. And then I would, I have that forever now. Um, but putting them in this little area here, sometimes you gotta, it's like a puzzle, try to figure out how to fit it in. But ultimately you're going to get it. When I make doors, uh, these are all the sample pieces for that. So it's pretty, you know, straightforward. I write down even what door set it's, it is. And um, that helps me remember. Because trust me, when you start doing this, after a while, you just start going buggy with this stuff. Um, you know, clamps, um, you know, jigs for some stuff, Craig jigs, stop for the... So this is my stop for the miter saw. When I get to this section here, I just use that. As you can see down there, it's got a little relief for the dust. Um, but this works great with the uh, in combination with one of those uh, small face frame clamps. But uh, you know, various tools here, sockets, um, whatnot. And this was a plain drawer. I mean, this has got a lot of stuff. So lots of shaper stuff in here, um, hand tool type stuff some Sterrett um, squares and uh, all, you know, basically the 24 inch Sterrett that's always hard to store. Um, that type of stuff goes in here. It's a monster. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff. I do enjoy the, um, you know, having organization when you're doing uh, this full time and you have organization, I think your jobs go smoother. Um, this is a great uh, toolbox. I call it a toolbox. Um, the sustainer, um, T-Lock, it's a SIS4 TL, uh, Sortainer three drawer. And oh, this is great. I mean, it's just, areas that you basically have to buy these. Um, it doesn't come with these, so you buy them separately, the little uh, containers, and you can take them off. In fact, I've got one missing. It's upstairs, because uh, I was doing the floor up there. But it's, you know, I take this to my jobs, and um, basically I've got everything I need in here to do an entire install. Um, and, you know, I put my drill guns, I put two drill guns in here, a charger and a 16 foot tape measure with a spare battery in here so I could basically go in and do all the um, you know installation and all so it's great it sits right there and now I've got my um, clipboard and check this out look at this the height of the clipboard just fits perfectly to um, connect to the uh, the sortainer so as I write on my clipboard, it just pushes up against there. That was pretty cool. It just kind of worked out that way. Um, magnets for my, I like to put pencils up here um, just so that I don't lose them. It's just nice. The um, various uh, items here, that's for um, beaded uh, face frames. The, um, that's a really cool system if you don't want to do it by hand and or a router tape, I mean, table saw. If you do beaded uh, face frames, I would encourage you to pick that up. That's a really cool um, fence here. Um, talk about that. I've got a port comes up here. So this is connected to the Y that's underneath the workbench. So from that six inch port that goes into the router table and the miter saw, it has a Y that connects
to that guy. So I get dust collection and I have a blast gate to shut it on and off. Um, and I've also got a port here that I can connect my shop vac hose to. There's the vacuum in there. Um, so the vacuum in there will connect to there. If I want to do shop cleanup, I can just, you know, I've got an extra port. Um, this is a, a radial arm saw, the Delta 12 inch. And ever since I, I fell in love with Norm Abrams, I wanted one. And on Craigslist, I saw this um, probably, let's see, it was 10 years ago because I got it just after we moved to this home. And uh, I wanted to uh, utilize this end space for it. Um, so I built, I modified the cabinet for this guy here and put a shelf in to support it. And then there's a blast gate back there that's connected to this that um, opens up. I think I've done some videos on that as well, um, but it's pretty cool tools to have. Um, this is a 12 inch. All right, so now up, up here, I've got lots of storage for various items, um, routers. So this is uh, my um, spillover sustainers, you know, whatever tools. This one's the cordless multi-tool. This actually goes on the little vacuum um, for the jobs. Always goes on little, that little vacuum um, that I showed you. My Festool MIDI sharpening um, setup here. Uh, this is that uh, duplex uh, sander. I did a video on that because that's a new addition. That's a pretty cool sander. Um, and this router bit set, these are for doors, um, specific uh, doors there. And then... This is the, uh, you probably wondered where all my chargers are. This is my charging setup for a lot of stuff, but not everything. Um, the DeWalt um, 20 volt maxes, those get charged over here. I don't have room for them here. And frankly, it's okay. I like it the way that it is. It's perfect. Um, these guys here most likely are going to be going soon because um, the batteries are starting to go and I'm not going to get new batteries because this guy barely works. That's a 16 gauge. I had another one and it broke. So I got the 20 volt max. And so, um, when the, my 18 gauge Brad Naylor goes, um, when the battery goes, I'm going to probably, um, put that on Craigslist to somebody who would love to have it with, with these batteries and then get the 20 volt max, um, Brad Naylor because I love having that cordless brad nailer. These, um, the 16 gauge and the 18 gauge. Uh, the 16 gauge I use mostly for um, face frames and installs. So this is a 23 gauge pin nailer that uh, doesn't work great. It's, it's just for small stuff. A couple of big, you know, screw guns there. But this works great. I can put all my, um, you know, all my little 12 volt uh, Makitas, slide those in there. I've got all sorts of stuff here. My right angle, I've got my little cordless uh, uh, 12 volt uh, Bosch reciprocating. And then I've got my chargers. And all the chargers are, they just fit perfectly in here. It was like it was made for that perfect amount because there's no space in between. They completely fit so tightly. Kind of funny, um, you know, painting supplies uh inflator there and then this is a car detailing and magazine area gotta have that stuff you can't have a shop without uh, a couple of um fire extinguishers right i think that's something that every shop needs to have i've got my emergency shutoffs uh for the gas and the um, water just in case. Got my emergency bag and I've got some uh, bunch of stuff up there with these awesome speakers. I did a video on those too. Oh, I love these things. Um, yeah, so I've got a vacuum in here as well. <clears throat> so you can see that guy's tucked in there. Um, it's just a, it's just a, one of those uh, after Thanksgiving or Christmas specials, whatever the Home Depot has every year. I got it for 25 bucks. 
Um, it doesn't fit bags though. Uh, it's the it's the one thing that's annoying. You can't put a bag on that guy, so you unfortunately don't get the ability to to save the um, the filter. So pretty much every time you use it, the filter clogs. Uh, I need to get a dust deputy for it. I just have no space for. It. All right, so this is deep storage. Okay, I put all the um, paint for our home in here, the gallons or whatever. And then I've got some various other stuff inside. My painters there, all my painting supplies, and then that framing nailer that I picked up at that uh, Craigslist haul. That's in there, it fits perfect. Again, latch that thing. What would a shop be without shop towels? So this is where I hang a lot of my 12 inch blades. The, those are actually sharp, they're ready to go. Um, not the dull ones. All right, over here, we're tucked into the corner here. A lot happening here. Of course, I would love to not have all those chairs, but really, this is a house, this is a garage. You kind of have to store some stuff. Um, you got to make the wife happy because already, you know, wives don't like, or um, and let's just say spouses that aren't woodworkers don't like the shop being taken up by all this stuff. And unfortunately, you know, there's nothing I can do. However, this shop makes money. I know some places don't make money and they take up space. So that's my, you know, case uh, to say, hey, I'm using the shop to make money. Uh, lots of hanging stuff. You got to put stuff up on walls when you have, um, you know, shop space like this. It, it, you can't just like spread it out and put it on the floor everywhere. So a lot of hanging stuff, big pipe clamps and um, various other stuff. This old 14 inch bandsaw bucket, put this bandsaw table on it and made a little fence for it. And the thing cuts so nicely and it's great. It cuts PVC pipe, it cuts uh, wood, it cuts all sorts of stuff that probably you're you know, not supposed to be cutting on it, but you know what, I don't care. It's a pretty cool saw. Um, have it set up now with the little vacuum under it. Worked out perfectly. The whole thing just worked out great because my son likes to use this and I need to get a, a hose. I, I have a hose that goes here and then it connects to this Y. I had that Festool Y for the vacuum and it worked perfectly, but I just need to go to Woodcraft and pick up another one of those, um, those uh, hoses that kind of like crinkle up and they get smaller and then they get bigger, like expanding and uh, contracting hoses. That's, it works perfectly on there. Shapers, uh, this is uh, for dedicated, you know, pieces. You can see like, basically when you see like these knives that are that are in these shapers, they're kind of like made for that. They're all set up, they're ready to go. The feeders are all ready to go. And all you need to do is just put the wood through and you're gonna end up with the same um, pieces every time. So that's why I like to have these. Uh, and they all have custom hoods. So the, um, I mean, this is like dust free. You, can, you can't believe how much material, look at that thing. I mean. That's what it's doing. It's a huge bull nose with a cove in it, and it's for edging uh, for countertops. And the thing comes out, and basically there's no um, inside when you're making this. It's just crazy how little dust comes out. And the shaper, I mean, the dust, four inch dust port pulls a lot of, a lot of dust there. So that's awesome. Um, planer, 15 inch planer. That does have a, um, it has the uh, carbide uh, head on it. And, uh, you know, I don't use it a whole lot anymore, but it's there if I need it for drawers and stuff. This is that router table that uh, I picked up with the joint tech fence and all that stuff. I really like this little setup. I, it's, it's coming in handy. I'm already using it. I love this little sander. And um, I just feel like that was really cool. I found this and uh, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to utilize the, radial arm saw um, with the router on it, but I may. So a router goes in there and this was all custom made to be like a, um, a multi-router uh, where you can do like uh, mortises and uh, tenons and all that stuff. So there's a piece that attaches here and um, you put your workpiece in it up, down, side to side. So it's really cool. Another shaper, uh, again, Craigslist, right? I mean, everything. Um, pick this up. And uh, this thing, 
is three phase, but it came with a uh, phasomatic. So it's a three, it's a five horsepower, three phase ball door motor. And the guy used it twice when I bought it and he was scared shitless of it. So he said, Dave, um, make me a deal on this thing. Cause I don't ever want to use this. Uh, he had his Powermatic 66. He had a joiner, all this stuff that he never used because he was scared of it all. So he was trying to sell everything. Um, and I picked, picked this up for a great deal. Um, again, put a hood on it and this makes, um, raised panels. That's what that's for. Um, uh, and again, no dust when you mill with this zero dust and it's completely safe. Look at that. You don't even see the blade. This again, um, this is that shaper I was telling you about that. I got it for 200 bucks. This was a total rust bucket when I got it and I restored it and I mean, painted the entire thing, cleaned it all up, took the rust off of it and. I have pictures. I'll put a link right in the picture here. See if I can embed that. Um, but I'll show you what it looked like when I got it. And you'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe that's the same. I mean, look at this thing. It's so awesome. I love it. And even this, I restored that as well. Um, so, you know, got my bike, of course, got to have a bike storage. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff, door samples, um, detailing. That's for the car stuff. Uh, shaper fences there that I probably never use and I probably won't ever use them because I make all these. Um, everything up here is for long, you know, 16 foot, 17 foot casing or crown. And you can't have too much uh, storage for that. I have another one up there that holds 16 foot or 17 or whatever the length you need. This is another eight foot section here for eight foot pieces. And this, you saw just a, a video recently where I uploaded a video on this guy. Um, I love that um, deal there. So this rack is great. It's very efficient and it just, uh, my shop would not be the same without it. Um, the platforms. Okay, so when I'm building jobs and since I'm in a garage, the floor is not level. It's pitched and every joint is raised up right so you basically have it a very uneven floor and every single time you put a cabinet down you put it one next to it you would have to shim those cabinets in order for them to be level well i don't want to have to shim everything i want to be able to put down a cabinet let's say while it's gluing up and not have it glue up twisted so um, these platforms are great because they they're flat and um this particular one is 10 feet long. That's uh, eight feet long. They're at the same height. So the um, level to one another. So if I need to con connect the two, um, if I had a long cabinet piece that I wanted to put right here, I could do that. I just thought it would be neat to show my uh, shop because there are so many people out there that are dying to start shops. And I think they feel intimidated because they see people's shops and they're like, I don't even know how to start. Well, start with whatever you can do, whatever space you have and um, work from it. For instance, this was started with one cabinet, which was this cabinet. This is completely separate. So this guy right here was a completely separate entity all by itself. And when I built it, it was just to be a side table uh, for the um, table saw. And then I decided I wanted a big um, assembly table. So I made this assembly table. So then I thought, well, why don't I put those two together? And then if I did that, I could make one big top, right? So I said, why don't I do that? So I decided to take all the stuff you can see, like there's, there's areas here where you can tell they've, it's been modified. Um, and I put all these pieces together. In fact, you can even see this piece right here, um, that cut right there. When I moved this from my previous shop, I had to cut that in order to get the piece out of the garage and uh, move it. So all this comes off as one big piece. And um, it's crazy to see like this whole thing is one big piece We've set up and um, the saw, table saw I had before this one was a contractor saw. It was a Delta contractor saw. And it was actually a very good saw. 
and um, I really feel like I could still be using it today. It probably wouldn't be, you know, maybe the motor would, would have burned out. I don't know. But as far as the trueness of it, that was a very good saw. I used a really good blade and I upgraded the uh, fence to the Beesmeyer fence. And um, it, it was a really good saw. It didn't have very good dust collection. But um, if you would have put this type of system on it, it probably would have been really good. Um, but the open stand, you know, it doesn't really lend itself to very good dust collection. But, you know, it is what it is. The, the motor hanging out the back, you know, takes a little bit more space up, but that's really no big deal. Um, I think that people think you got to have like these, you know, monster, you know, tools in order to do this stuff. You get really good results from tools like those contractor saws and, you know, use a good blade and you'd be surprised at the results you can get. They're very good. Um, I find uh, there's actually a couple on Craigslist right now with some really good values. I mean, you could get a really good value on a Delta contractor saw made from the 90s and early 2000s. And uh, you'll be shocked at how good they are. And you can get a full setup, you know, with a router, with an upgraded fence. A lot of these have the Beesmeyer upgraded fences. You can get some of these for crazy prices, like 300 bucks, 250, 300, 350. And, you know, it's, it's great. You could start your shop. Uh, you don't need to go nuts with this stuff. Um, when you have time, when you have money, when you have the, uh, the wherewithal to uh, figure out whether or not you need a bigger industrial saw like this, then, you know, that's one thing, but you don't necessarily need it. Um, now, this is a cabinet shop that's running full time and um, it's, we're constantly processing material. You, you really need to have um, motors that can handle that amount of abuse and tools that are uh, very, very strong. So, you know, not every saw is going to be able to handle that. You know, um, some cabinet shops, I mean, cabinet saws aren't going to be able to handle it either. Um, so there's not a lot of, there's some brands out there that don't make good stuff and um, they're not going to be able to handle that, that day in and day out of, you know, use that cabinet shops are going to put through their tools, especially as the blades get dull. If people don't sharpen their blades, it really puts a lot more wear and tear on the, the actual motor, right? Because it's more stress on the motor and strain. So you're constantly having to, to, to push harder. Um, it's a lot more out of you too. You're physically exerting yourself more and more. Um, but uh, yeah, so get um, your, your blades sharpened. I have a video on that as well. It's something that you need to do. You need to um, find a good spot. In my video, I talk about what place to send your blades. And um, if you've got good blades, you don't want to throw them out. You want to get them sharpened. And once they start showing signs that they're dull, like not cutting so quickly, um, get a good blade and you can sharpen them several times. But if you use them until they're super, super, super dull, it becomes even harder to sharpen them. So it's more money to sharpen them. So um, do them quicker, sharpen them quicker. Uh, it'll be cheaper for you. All right. So, I mean, I've, I've basically talked your ear off. Um, you might, might wonder, did my auto detailing cart there and um, this cart here from that tool hall, this was that accessory I was telling you about for the radial arm router. Um, it's just, uh, those are going to go out to the shed. So I have them parked over here. So, um, oh, I didn't talk about the insulation. Uh, insulate your garage door if you want to avoid that heat coming in because we get that afternoon heat and it's nasty. So boards would cup and, and, and warp because of the, the um, heat coming in. So if you want to avoid that and make your garage a lot cooler, insulate these. You can get these panels at the box stores. I got these at Lowe's and I think these are inch and a quarter um, or one inch. Every garage door might be a little different. So just measure your garage door. You want to measure in between here. Um, actually, let me, no, I can't. I thought maybe I could pull that out. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a, that's an inch and a half. Yeah. So um, just measure the, um, the depth there. So you, you, there's like a lip there and they fit really nicely. So friction fit, 
um, with some construction adhesive here and there just to hold them in. Um, but cut them on the table saw, um, which is cool because we have a table saw and uh, it's really great. Uh, I love it. So I can stand here and you don't feel the heat coming in at all. Um, hey, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And I know I've been rambling, but if there's anything that you could think of that um, you would like to talk about, just let me know. And I'd be happy to, uh, more than happy to talk to people um, about it, you know, whatever. I'm trying to put out some videos, uh, maybe like three or four a week right now, because I have so much footage I'm going through and I'm just putting videos out. And the footage might be from, you know, three years ago, two years ago, one year ago. Um, if it's on cabinets, if it's whatever, I have so many jobs that I've got footage of building the jobs. Um, as I'm building them, I, I video everything, but, um, you know, there's so much footage I'm going through it. If there's anything specific that you would like to see, let me know because I've got a lot of it. I, you know what, if you want to know, Hey, how do you do a face frame? Um, how do you install a cabinet with uneven floors? Um, what do you do when the walls are bumped out and they're, they're bumpy? Um, you know, how do you scribe uh, a mantle to a wall? when you install it, um, how do you install a mantle? You know, how do you put crown molding up by yourself? How do you do all this stuff? Um, I know there's so many questions out there and trust me, if I was starting, I would want to know uh, a place I could go to find out. And YouTube has definitely been great for so many, um, reasons for me. I do lots of stuff and I love to find resources on YouTube. To help me with that as well. So um, not only am I a contractor, a licensed contractor um, to build cabinets, but I just, I'm a do-it-yourselfer. So I try to do everything. I love to learn and I love to um, show people how to do stuff as well. And I may not be the best teacher. Uh, I for surely am not the best teacher, I, um, but I'm learning. And uh, please let me know if there's anything I can do. Thanks.